I'm Mr. June of Kingsford Heights, born Fort Wheat, Tennessee, May 10, 1928. We're sitting uh, on Meadow Gold, is Meadow Brook? Meadow Brook. Meadow Brook Boulevard. Boulevard, coming into, Mich into Kingsford Heights off of uh, US 6 and 35. Uh, we're sitting on a little bench here. This is, uh, this is a thoroughfare that Mr. June has, has taken just short of a million times, coming home, going to work, going to play, going to take care of business. How did this community get started, Mr. June? It was created by the federal government for war workers that worked at the Kingsbury ammunition plant about four miles north of here. And there were 22,000 people worked there, and the majority of them lived here in Kingston Heights after it was built, specifically for that reason. Uh, I came here from the mining, coal mining belt of East Tennessee and Kentucky in the Appalachian area. My dad was a miner. I had a, two sisters and one brother, and we came here during right after World War II started. It was a new experience for me and others that came here from all recruited areas in the South, West, North, everywhere where they could get workers. And it ended up with 22,000 employees working in three shifts, 10 hours a day, seven days a week at this ammunition plant. And I married in 1950. And my, my family, grandchildren, and they all were born and raised right here in Kingston Heights uh, from the 50s clear through to, to now. Well, uh, this is one of the spots that, that we are privileged to, to have you talk about your involvement with sports out here. This is where I really got to know Mr. June, Mr. Jim Lipscomb. He became a coach for us when they started the Code League here. He became a, an institution, if you will, throughout LaPorte County for his skill, knowledge of the game, his commitment to improving each and everybody, not only the players, but even sharing his knowledge with the coaches that he was competing against. And it served to benefit all of us. It added to our growth, our ability to not only understand the game, but to understand life better and what you can do if you would just try. Mr. So June, tell us something about this, this baseball diamond here. <clears throat> well, it's, it's been named uh, one diamond has been named after A.C. Bynum, who was a born and raised uh, man that died a few years ago. His whole family is gone now, and he was active here uh, at this diamond. He became a, a, being an accredited umpire. After they quit doing baseball, they did softball here, and he was active in that uh, uh, slot for years and this is one reason why that uh, the, either the town or the board members or some of the people in the neighborhood who adopted the field ought to be named after him and it was his activity that caused them to do that unpaid volunteer and knowledgeable and uh, nobody really likes umpires but I think he was one of the best that uh, had done his job here and uh, so they named the, the, the the field after him. He was a man that was very, very talented as a baseball pitcher when he was in high school, but at the time uh, it was way before the Jackie Robinson era, and he never had a chance to even show 
what he could do as a major leaguer. And uh, he really earned what he got by having this field named after him. Uh, he did never play for me because he was a year or two ahead of when I uh, got involved with the, with the kids' leagues out here. But he was very talented, a good pitcher, one of the best that his high school had ever had. I don't know how many no-hitters he threw, but it was a barrier there that was never being able to be torn down into the Robson area and some of the better players that might have done better if had they had the chance that were right here from Kingwood Heights. Never had a chance to show it, and he was one of the first. Can I really say something about AC? When we were in the Code League, the 15, 14, uh, 15 to 16 year olds, you brought him in to, to, to pitch um, batting practice for us. With his lightning fastball, his, his unbelievable curves, which further added to our ability to deal with the competition that we were up against here in the in the league that we participated in, and it, it um, I remember the all-star team that had been formed, and he came in to work with us. And as you say, he would come. He he uh, like you. You weren't getting paid the number of hours that you gave to us. I have thought about that since being grown. You were never financially compensated for any of, of the numerous hours that you planted in, 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 in our spirit, in our understanding. And this effort here is specifically designed to let you know how much we appreciate what you did, certainly for what you did for me, in helping me to, if I can be so bold as to say, to uh, identify with the God that was buried in me some way. You helped to bring that out while we were on the baseball team. I appreciate what you're saying <clears throat> about me and, uh, and my, my spirits and my uh, gifts and stuff. Uh, what I did was priceless. There was no amount of money could pay me to enjoy it more than I already did because I was able to do it and see a person such as you that has advanced to doing something that you like to do, that you probably was born to do. I don't know how many adventures you have had, but it seemed like that is once that one that I was talking about before that was buried inside of you that you didn't know about. So now that you're having a chance to do something with it, there are not enough hours in the day and not enough weeks in the year for you to do the things you'd like to do to improve your ideas of life and liberty and community activity among children. Thank you. Thank you so much. And truly, living out here in Kingsford Heights was the foundation that added to my wherewithal, regardless whatever city that I might have lived in, whatever size city that I might have lived in. It was right here that my foundation was laid, my, my ethics, my morals, my drive, my, my desire to want to be all that I could be. And while I can't claim to have done all that I could have done, certainly, many of the things that I, I got involved with was started right here in Kingsford Heights from watching the older adults assume responsibility assume leadership, take a stand on, on issues. And I'm eternally grateful. And hopefully this that we're doing today will add to the understanding of those coming behind us that they too can take wherever they are and add to the, their, their own personal wherewithal, but certainly be a contributor to those who might end up in their spiritual circle. So Kingsford Heights has done all of that for me and wherever I have lived I've always let people know about this little community right here what it has done. It's living in a void right now there's a, a sparse number of people here that are interested in the things that were really important when Mr. Dunlap was young and when I was younger, and when a lot of other people that have passed on were involved in, but 
we don't have the interest that, in, uh, that involves uh, community spirit anymore. And the children and the young teenagers that are coming along, in a way, have no one to look up to, like we did, and like the kids that I coached, they had people to look up to, and they couldn't wait to get a chance to play. We don't have that here anymore. The Kingswood Heights remains there for the doing, for the same kind of spirit, for the same kind of doings that we had back in those days, but there has to be something done to draw people's interest into doing something. Uh, there's no activity at all that uh, we know of out here that, that does that. Uh, it, it remains kind of dormant, waiting to be plowed, rebirthed, rebirthed and with new people. But somewhere along the line, the good Lord will plant what should be here, and it will roll back to like it should be, and like we remember it. That's right. Uh, the great people that we remember that are gone, hopefully there will be some in the future that will be of the same uh, ilk and won't have to command uh, a following, but people will be glad to have them to lead them and it will be the same thing as it was years ago. I know it's a uh, far-fetched thinking, but it's the way that I look at things. And uh, I've got a saying that I say, Today is tomorrow's yesterday. Tomorrow never comes. Yesterday is always gone. So you only have today to look forward to, to do some of the things. And today, today is the day for you to do that. And tomorrow, which never comes, will be today. And you'll do that and do that. That's something, that's something in this world that you just want to do is still out there. Yes. You just have to find it and enjoy doing it. Yes. And your time will be served and your satisfaction will be such that you'll feel like you've done something on this earth that was palatable yes. and everybody was in it to follow. grandson of Mr. Jones. And this is Derek Lipscomb. I think that that might be uh, Terry. Uh, this is Mr. Penn. Mr. Penn lived on Ivanhoe. Bunch of pins. Mr. Penn got busy after the war. Oh, this is Harold Stevens. He passed early in his in his young adult years. Stanley Evans. Oh, this is my brother Willie Davis. He was in the Korean conflict. Robert Evans. After the war, Robert went on to. Uh, live in Boston and he retired there as a uh, as a cop oh this is Terry Stevens Terry Stevens he still survived this is Mitchell Cobb he was in for a short while in the military Marcel I don't remember Marcel going into the military but maybe he did uh, who do we have down here? This is Melvin Cobb. He was in the Air Force. Melvin is deceased now. Who else do we have up here? Jerry Hunt. Jerry Hunt went into the Air Force. He survived. Mike Beatty. Mike Beatty lives down in in uh, uh, Fort Wayne, I think, right now. Uh, this is John Buchanan. John Dale became one of the first cops in Laporte. He's deceased, he's been, been gone several years. This is Herman Evans. 
affectionately referred to as Sam. He lives in Michigan City. Sam ended up working for the Internal Revenue Service for a thousand years. Who would have known that he could count that well? The same is true with his brother, who we call Bubba. His name was Larry, Larry Evans. He also worked for the Internal Revenue Service. He lives in Michigan City right now. This is Miami Bynum. He was the first black to play for Union Township. I think he was in the Air Force. After the military, he lived out in Delaware, uh, Wilmington, somewhere out that way. Uh, who do we have here? This is Eric Jeffries. I don't know where he's living right now, but uh, I, I think he's still alive. I've got to bring my picture out here and, and share it with the good folk. D.H. Hunt. This is Jerry's father. Mr. Hunt, along with Mr. June, put a lot of time into us. He was our Little League baseball coach. Actually, that's how we ended up with Mr. June. We had wove Mr. Hunt out, I mean, just drained him. And they started a league called Coat League, 15 to 16 year olds. Larry Anderson and I approached Mr. June, not knowing anything about his athletic background, and asked if he would be interested, be willing to coach us. This is me, Sal Dunlop with his big head. I was in the military from December. 66 to December 68, did a tour of duty in Vietnam. Oh, we also got AC, El Falso Bynum. But I don't remember him going into, well, it says Army, so he was there. He was there. I'm so proud to see that my brother is up there, Willie Davis. And this is uh, Clayton Jordan. I missed him. He was our first big man in LaPorte County. Stood 6'11", something like that. And this is Robert Branscombe. His brother Johnny. Johnny should be up. Here he is, Johnny Branscombe. Johnny went into the Marines. That played a, a critical role in my desire to become a Marine. That uniform that Johnny used to wear. And there's David Lipscomb, Marines. He still lives here in Kingsford Heights. Now we did have one young man who um, he came as close uh, to making it into the pros as anybody did out here. In was your grandson? Yes. We call him Chico. Yes. Brian Lipscomb. Yes. He was uh, my second, my second uh, grandson of uh, my uh, my second oldest daughter, and he was a natural athlete. His dad was a natural athlete, and he came along and did the same thing: switch hitter, play all positions could run with, with the wind, <laughs> excellent basketball player, swimmer, the whole thing. He was a phenomenon in a way. You know, everything that he went at should have been done yesterday. Well, he's a wonderful man and uh, he has goals that I hope someday he'll reach, but he, he's had his ups and downs. And he, after, after a goal now that I hope that, uh, that he gets, and it's, it's going to be something that's going to be a mark for, yes, he has a drive, he has a vision. Drive, and and he has a vision, and he's got something in him that uh, he said came from me. Hopefully, uh, it'll turn out to be what he wants to be. I think it will. Yeah. I think it will. He's, uh, yeah, yeah. he's identified a void yeah. that he's trying to f fill. He's trying his best, and he's giving it all he's got. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, tell us, how far did he get into the pros? Uh, he, he was drafted in first in uh, 18th round, and uh, he didn't make it out of uh, 
out of uh, the miners because he got caught in a money thing where they would just like the crew of the turn up their team now. That's what Pittsburgh was doing at the time. Yeah. And he hadn't been there long enough to to survive, <laughs> and, and no, on uh, there long enough to get noticed by another another team. You mm -hmm. know. I told him that he, as much as he liked it and loved it, it wasn't his mission. Mm -hmm. What he's doing now is uh, is going to be something that'll be a mark that for everybody to see if it goes through. Like he's got it already pushing. Yes. Uh, his uh, house is built out of uh, containers. Containers. Yeah. Yes, uh, containers. It's it's a it's an instigated thing that nobody else is doing it. He said, and he's the first. Absolutely. And, and definitely to be the first out here. You uh, had an opportunity to work for the. Uh, the town mm -hmm. as a uh, electrician which added to your appreciation for building um, and it has led to you now pursuing a major project and I want to certainly give an opportunity for you to share what that is all about well you know again uh, coming from you know Kingsford Heights has always had a reputation okay of being a blue collar uh, sort of a town, um, war town, more like a mining camp town, if you will. Okay, so there were those, uh, you know, that would look down upon Kingsford Heights at, if you were from there, at, you know, as if they were looking down at your nose. So my big thing coming up, growing up in an environment that's 64% low income, I wanted to make a difference here. So uh, that was one of the reasons why I, I signed the contract to play professionally and, uh, and bypass college was because I wanted to get my family out of here. I wanted to try to get to the major leagues as quickly as I possibly could. Um, but again, coming from that, you know, that since baseball didn't work out, I've been to the military, you know, tried a couple different business ventures that, you know, that really weren't for me, but taught me a lot about what was eventually going to be me. Uh, and, and, and now, because that vision that I had back then of what I wanted it to look like around here is now finally starting to come to its physical equivalent. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, my grandfather, there's nothing in this town that's even remotely, you know, dedicated to his memory. And he's still here, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but. I wanted to make an, an additional thrust forward, something that I could help establish our family's legacy with. So I started a land and property development company last year, okay. and uh, we'll be purchasing some property and we'll be developing uh, small housing communities within it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only uh, company in the state of Indiana that does what it does. In other words, we're going to be building these affordable houses out of shipping container construction. So, our first project, it's going to be right here in our hometown, you know, and uh, we're looking at purchasing a, 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 a fairly decent sloth of property that uh, we will be able to put and establish 95 rental homes okay. on Good. the properties. Now, this is the best part. And this is what makes me grin inside so much, is the fact that once we start the project and, and, and start actual construction, we will eventually donate these roads back to Kingsford Heights. And then I get to name the roads whatever it is that I want. So when you look at uh, establishing a family legacy, what better way than to name a road uh, after your family? Absolutely, yeah. I was glad to hear that. Certainly glad that, that you're pursuing something that is extremely needed. Affordable housing is a, um, a, a, a necessity all over the country, and certainly this geographical area right here is in, in need of uh, such a project. And to be able to look into it, claim it from a standpoint that it's, it's going to happen, it's just a matter of time, and be able to include. Mr. June, indeed, as a part of that by naming one of the streets or more 
once become known as Mr. June Street and Jim Lipscomb could be another street. The bottom line is that it's, it's going to be a tribute to somebody who certainly deserves it, he's earned it, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing that final product before I clock out of here. So I know that you're working hard indeed, to make it happen. I am. And as you know, well know, I, I support you in this effort and doing everything I can to, to help you to eliminate some of the obstacles, even if it means getting out of your way myself so that you can take flight. Mr. Dune, tell us about your garden. Well, <clears throat> anything garden. else you want to add to where this was the center of the black community, colored as it was referred to back in the day? Tell us about that. Well, the garden is the third love of my life, after the Lord, my family, and then the garden. And the garden is planted on the property of a neighbor. And I've been, I have been using this and had my garden here, growing this garden here for the last 50, 60 years. Mr. Dunlap's grandfather was one of the people that helped me when I needed help. And they were living next door to me. Everybody called him dad. And yes. Uh, he'd tell me things that I needed to know. And he would, every year we'd have a race to see who planted the garden first. And uh, at the time he was just too much for me. And I have to admit it, yeah. <laughs> but I've never had nothing but good neighbors. Uh, Mr. Dunlap's mother always, instead of saying, hi, Mr. Lipscomb, she said, hi, neighbor. And yet she had been living in Michigan City 30 years after she moved from out here next door to me. Uh, I knew that family, and it was like a long arm of my own family. The garden is something that I can't get enough of. And the Lord allowed me to live this long, I think, for a purpose of what I'm doing. I love it as much as I do him almost. And it supplies me with a tradition that I'm proud of, that I give away more than I keep and to everybody that I know. Peppers, tomatoes, okra, all kind of greens, purple hull peas, uh, and just the works. Onions, and pull them and take them to the people that enjoy them. So I feel blessed for that. and believe that the Lord left me here for these 90 plus years to show what can be done, if any had been allowed to be done, if they have the faith in you, and the ambition in their own right and have the kind of thing it takes to make a garden good, which is all work. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. He's doing a great work. He's doing a great work in me. God is doing a great work. So what should be considered as we proceed is that this work did not begin with you. Our mothers, mothers, and fathers, fathers. Planted seeds when we were but the faint notion of a dream in their mind. They hope for a harvest, a legacy, a great work. So may your next step forward help us to connect.